So here we got, I chose Olivia to do heel drills because when I walk her by herself, she's terrible, okay? Now, we're over here in the work spot, so she might go back to original, right? So what happens a lot of times where you do heel drills, they do really good, and then you go somewhere else, it's a different environment, they don't do really good. So a couple things I want to address. If you're trying to walk on a harness, you've got no control of your dog. Your work's going to be a little harder. You can still do it. It's going to be a little harder, in my opinion. Some people love it, and they tend to be the ones that want to stick a piece of food in front of their face for every single little thing. I don't like doing that. Um, so the collar, on your collar, you want to have two fingers. She's on about three, which isn't bad. Three's not terrible. Unless they try to back out, then they can usually get out of it. Hey, sweet thing. Oh my God. And she's already been in group, right? So she was in group earlier. Um, she's been inside for probably at least an hour and a half, but this girl has a ton of energy, right? So heel drills are just basically redirecting. You're, you have an outside turn, which is the dog goes on your outside. You have an inside turn, which is the dog goes on your inside. I always tell people to focus on outside turns until they get pretty close, because when you do an inside turn, you're either going to have to kick way out, which is awkward for the person, or you're going to trip, right? If you try to do it, if the dog's farther in front of you and you try to do it and you don't go like this, right? That's kind of an awkward thing for a person. So what happens is people try to turn into the dog and then they fall and then the dog's off in front of them anyways, right? Ready? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> you're such a good girl. I told you she's going to be good for the camera, right? There's a sharp turn, right? You have sharp, you have sharp 180s. Usually you want to go a soft outside turn, right? And then when I do an outside turn, you can go food. This is where I'll use a, I'll use a ton of food, right? It's an outside turn and you can use food. She turned with you, made no release pressure, right? So I'm going to create a, a pressure, right? So you turn, she hits the least pressure. You're not doing nothing, but she hits the least pressure. She's got to come. Now when the dog comes to you, you can give food. Or you can give a pat. I told you she's going to be, she's really, she really is a terrible walker by herself. So now, so look, there she's starting to pull. Boom. Every step forward because she's going for that piece of hot dog. I usually don't do that. I just had to employ it for her because she's being good. Unlike I thought she was going to be. So what happens, once they start pulling, you have to redirect to follow you, right? And you can give her food right here, right? So now she's perfect, right? Now she knows that piece of food is there. And so what happens when they start pulling, if you keep walking forward, a step forward is a reward to the dog. So if you, so say she starts pulling, right? Now she's pulling. If you keep going, well, now we just reward her for going forward, right? We're rewarding that pressure, that pressure of her pushing into it gets more and more and more and more. <clears throat> and then that gets to where they're pulling your arm out. So that's your outside turns, right? You're looking for, as soon as she starts pulling, that's when you want to turn. Boom, right? Good girl. Now you can reward her, right? That's your outside turns, right? Then your inside turns, you might have to do a little pressure. Boom. But your inside turn has to be before they get way out in front of you. If they're already out in front of you, you can't do an inside turn because you're going to trip, right? Right? So see where she's at? She's a little in front of me. If you're going to do an inside turn now, you got to go like this and cut them off. So what happens is the outside turn gets them pretty close and the inside turn pushes them back. Now, when you got big energy dogs, so say... The first five minutes, see that was a sharp U-turn. The first five minutes you're gonna, of your 30 minutes with your dog, you're gonna go outside for five to seven minutes and play, right? That sharp turn, good girl. That sharp turn helps bigger energy dogs. So even if you, so say you go in the backyard and play with her, you're getting some of that initial energy out. These sharp turns, and I like to kind of stomp my feet, try to help the dog out more, right? And I should be saying good, but I'm busy talking. You want to mark one right there. Mark is your is your reward word, right? Good girl. You're being... It's because we're in the work spot. I should have went somewhere else where we don't walk. I mean, we haven't worked in a long time, though, for sure. For real. 
Right, outside turn, inside turns, right? And then your outside turn to the inside turn is a figure eight. So your first five to seven minutes, you're out playing ball with a dog in the backyard. You go into the front, right, to go for your walk. Five to seven minutes, you're going to do these heel drills. Then once you stop, you keep going. You don't stop for the dog. Now, once your walk gets pretty good, you can let them do whatever they want. But until you get their walk really good, don't let them do whatever they want. All right? So outside turn, inside turn, a sharp U-turn gets them. And then you can stop and have a little bit of pressure if you want. That makes them have to stop with you. All right, so now let's talk about let's talk about luring. All right, let me get this piece of hot dog. So if if the dog is nice and food motivated, you can use your regular food. She's very food motivated, so I can use regular food, right? And go good, right? Good. This is called loading the marker. So I never do it, but it's something you can do if you want. Good, and bring the food up so. They'll get used to the pattern of the food coming from here. So if you're using a pouch, you can feed from here. Good. Sometimes, but sometimes you have to go good. Right? Does that make sense? So that way it's not always coming from the same spot. And then you have yes. Right? Yes in the movement. I'm not good at this. I keep telling myself I got to do better, uh, but I don't do it. So we can use one marker word. Most, most pet people just need one marker word. They're not going to do... Depends on how kind of precision and, and advanced and advanced and advanced they want to get, right? Yes, All right. The word and the movement, All right? So, anyways, here's your lure. Here's the dog sit. Good, All right? Break. I use break every single time to start with because I almost always go to implied stays. Not a big deal. Right. So let me use a different word. I'm going to use but. Right. Because the word doesn't matter. The word doesn't matter. You can use whatever word you want. What matters is the physical cue and then the consequence, which would be a reward for doing something we want. And it would be a punishment for doing something we don't. So it would be but. Right. Then you go nose to the head. Good. Right. And break. Good. But. Good. <laughs> See, that one time she knew it. Well, probably also because of the food. Usually when there's food in my hand, it's leading to a reward, right? Ready? But. Motion. Good. Mark reward. Verbal. Slight pause. Another thing that I'm not real good at. Verbal. Slight pause. Physical cue. Mark and reward. Right? And then once you get a few of these, those in front of you, I don't like waiting real long. Um, to getting into this, you get them on the side of you and you go, but, and the reward, right? Um, I mean, that would be your heel, right? But I like doing sits, both spots pretty fast. People say not to do that, but I do, right? So you would go heel motion around. Now, obviously she's really good at it, right? She's done quite a bit. Um, so that's, that's how you would initially, if you're going to do a heel, you would initially go heel, get them around. Now, I've also worked on stationary heels and, and moving heels, right? So a stationary heel is heel, right? And then you get them into the sit and then you mark and reward, right? And then, uh, ready, front? Good. And then a moving heel, oh, I should do this the other way. I should do this the other way, right? Good. All right. So a moving heel would be, and I do these right away from the start too, because they're pay attention to your body language, right? So if you go heel, lure around and then start moving. Good. And then I'll mark at two steps and I'll reward at four steps. All right. Did I hit everything? Outside turns, inside turns, sharp U turns, outside in inside turns. You figure eights right then you have the sharp u turns really the high and you got oh that's another thing you got to watch if you do quite a few of these right it gets them into you right good now sometimes that turns into a play then you got to go then you got to throw in the pause right good. 
If you use affection, one or two, that's it. If you go, yeah, you're such a good, 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 good job, they're more likely to go up, right? Because affection is an arousal reward. So anytime you're using an arousal reward for anything that you want to be calm, you need it to be chill. If it's for recall, you want it to be big. Let me make sure this green light's on. This thing scare me. I lost one of my, I lost one of my things. Um, microphones. I'm gonna have to buy more. Uh, right. So that's your heel drills. Um, don't get them excited. Don't get them excited for the walk. Like, oh, you ready to go for a walk? Because then the dog gets up there. Then you're gonna have to do a lot more heel drills to start with. But pretty typically, if you do five to seven minutes of heel drills, you can then start walking, right? So a lot of times with dogs, all I walk is from like right there to where this pole is, about 20 feet. I'll do five, seven minutes of heel drills, and then I'll just walk up there and, and turn around, right? So if you're walking in front of your house in your neighbor's house and turn around, you're getting all this good walk, right? I always tell people, go as far as you can. If you can walk 70 feet, without them pulling, but they start pulling at 73, 75 feet, then walk 70 feet straight because that's a big reward for the dog, right? It's just watching what they'll do. But a lot of times, at least three days, I only walk like right here. I don't, I don't start going. But then, right, so if you're walking 15 feet straight, turning and going 15 feet back, you're still walking for 30 minutes, right? You're still getting your exercise. Oh, that's the other thing. So say you're walking, you get some good walking, then you give them a break. You go, break, and let them come off and smell, right? And so you're walking on the sidewalk, and when you go break, you go totally off different surface. Go off into the gray grass, let them smell. Some people like to throw food on the ground for them to go. That's just, that's just ridiculous. Let them, let them do whatever they want while they're on break. If they want to sniff, sniff. I mean, if you want to throw food on the ground for them to sniff, by all means do it. I just think it's silly. Dogs instinctually know to sniff the ground. They don't need, well, I mean, some dogs need help sniffing the ground. I actually did have one not long ago that her head was always in the sky looking for something. She did need help on the ground. So pretty generally they don't though. What you want to do? You want to be free? I think I've done enough. Go ahead. Right. Um, right, inside turns, outside turns, eventually that turns into figure eights, right? The inside turn gets them somewhat close to you. I mean, the outside turn gets them, right? The dog's on the outside, dog's on the inside. The outside turn gets them somewhat close to you. The inside turn backs them up. Um, the key, and one of the keys, oh, I didn't do a correction. Right, you might have to, because she's because yours is practice being so wild. I'm gonna have to do it with food again, because yours is practice being so wild. And you can do you can do this as a leader too, right? So you might be you're walking here. Let me do. I had to think about what I was gonna say. So say you're doing your turns. You might have to. You might have to very quickly do a correction which is like this right so the correction is 80% the dog going where it just wants to and not paying attention to you and it's 20% you you saw how little how little I had to do right good girl right so in other words if the dog's flying off, you don't have to yank real hard. It's mostly their momentum that's doing it. Right? Good. Right? So let's see if I can make one up again. So you can go. Ready? Leave it. Good girl. All right. Let me show you correction. And, and you're trying to go down at their shoulder length. Right? You want to go at their shoulder length and kind of come across your body. So you're not trying, you're not trying to, you're trying not to, I can't talk. 
you're, trying, <laughs> you're trying not to go here. Hold on. You're trying not to go like this. You're trying to go like this, right? So it goes into the to the side of their muscle. And you know, there's going to be all kinds of people. Woo, 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 woo. Dude, that's all muscle. Their necks are strong as shit. All this, all, all the talk about, oh my God, you cannot hurt that dog. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, have you seen how hard some dogs pull and their throats never get hurt? Just settle down. And corrections are actually better. But you're trying to go like this, right? So kind of across your body, right? You, you don't want to go, for one, you're going to hit yourself. You're not going to get a good correction. But if the dog's there, you're, you're going like this. And you're trying to, you're not doing it up here. You're doing it down here about shoulder level of the dog. So it's going into the muscle. Now, you're probably going to mess one up or two. I still mess up some. I, I, don't, I really don't do a whole lot of correcting. Um, mostly when I do corrections, it's once they've learned how to walk. Now, I have with dogs that are practiced pullers, I have had to correct right away. Because then it gets to where you can reward right away. You know what I mean? Ha, you're such a good girl. Um... And I don't like, I do this food game where I throw food on the ground, but I'm always telling them it's okay. I don't like, if I use food for a distraction, I don't like letting them have it. Are you ready to go back? You didn't want that ball, dude? You don't like that ball, do you? The sweet thing. Um, so that would be a correction. I try to tell people unless you really have to try try to use just redirection with the least pressure right so they so they know how to turn the least pressure off and pay attention to you i usually try not to go into corrections until we're a couple weeks in or at least a few days of intense work um that way they know what is expected you know know what's expected um or they at least have something to fall back on so that way when you correct now, when you get into a safety situation where the dog's dragging you down the street, look, man, sometimes you got to correct right away. And then if you correct right away, then now, oh, they're paying attention. Boom, boom, boom. Now we can reward that much faster instead of doing buttloads of redirection like I do. So it just depends, right? It depends. I try the redirect, which to me is technically negative reinforcement because they hit the least pressure, the pressure comes off, and they start walking, that's the reward, right? Um, you know, that's all stupid book crap that all kinds of people disagree about, so. It's all dumb, they don't care. They don't care, they just want to be treated fair. Huh. Treated fair, teach what we want. Um, I think I'm at babbling point. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Oh, that's 20 minutes. Holy crap.